Hey friends, happy Thursday. Welcome back to another Cook with Chris. I am so excited to be live with you guys today and share with you one of my favorite really simple spring recipes. It's simple, but it's really delicious. We are doing a twist on the classic chicken soup. So we're taking it and we're taking our basic chicken soup and we're making it a little bit more spring-like. We are going to add some fresh dill. We're gonna add some lemon juice. We're gonna add some wild rice and it's just a really great way to make our chicken soup just a little bit different and just feel a little bit fresher for this new season and this month we're really just celebrating spring every week in cook with Chris um, today I'm going to be using the instant pot for this you can't really see it but I'm going to be using the Instant Pot for this, but if you do not have an Instant Pot, no worries. You can absolutely cook this on the stovetop in a stock pot or a Dutch oven, or you could even cook this in the slow cooker as well. So a lot of options for this soup. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share with you the ingredients that we need. And as always, I will post the full recipe to my stories after we're done chatting, after we're done cooking. Um, so stay tuned for that. So I'm going to share with you the ingredients and then I'll share with with you how we're gonna go ahead and make this and while it's cooking we will chat how to kind of change things change ingredients just a little bit make small tweaks for the different seasons so it doesn't feel like we are like completely reinventing the menu on our meal plan every single season we can just make those small tweaks so let's go ahead let's get started I'm gonna go ahead and put my instant pot on the saute function and just let it heat up for just a minute or two. Um, I like to start it on the saute function when I'm cooking any sort of soup or stew. Um, it's gonna beep at me because it's turning on. And uh, just saute the vegetables first. I just find the texture and the, it, it, it creates a little bit of that, um, that caramelization. And so it brings out a little bit of the flavor of the vegetables when I do it that way, rather than throwing it all in. But if you were to cook it in the slow cooker, it's totally fine to throw it all in. It'll still taste good. So what do we need for this? Well, we need our mirepoix. So mirepoix is our onion, our carrots, and our celery. Traditional mirepoix is two parts onion, one part carrot, one part celery. You might have heard of this referred to as sofrito in Italian cooking. Um, it's the same thing, just a little bit more minced, um, so smaller diced. And I just, for chicken soup, this small dice is totally fine with me. And I figured you guys have seen me chop onions and carrots and celery. And if you haven't and you want more tips on knife skills, I did an IGTV a couple months back with knife skills. Um, so you can refer back to that, but figured I didn't need to chop all of those with you guys today. So we've got carrot, celery, and onion, just like any other chicken soup. I've got two big old cloves of garlic, but as I always say, you measure garlic with your heart, so you can use as many cloves of garlic as you want. This soup does lend itself really well to a bunch of garlic, so I've got two big old cloves of garlic in there that I've already peeled just to make it easy. I'm gonna use my favorite kitchen tool, the microplane with those. Um, I am using a white sweet potato. So this is one large white sweet potato. I've already chopped it, so it's starting to turn a little bit. My mom actually asked me the question today as I was getting all of this ready, what to do if it does start turning brown a little bit because um, that's just oxidation. It's just being exposed to the air. It starts to turn a little bit brown or gray as soon as you chop it up. No big deal. If you're going to cook it right away, then you just put it in the soup. It's not bad. It's not like instantly going bad. It's just starting to oxidize, which is totally fine if you're about to cook it, if you're about to put it in the slow cooker or the instant pot. Now, if you want to prep it ahead of time and avoid it going brown or going as brownish gray, then you can just soak it in water. Just make sure to strain it before you put it in. Um, so I'm using a white sweet potato. This is a Japanese sweet potato but you can totally use an orange sweet potato, which is what I've used in the past as well. I love the white sweet potatoes because they're just mildly sweet. Um, you could totally use regular potatoes as well. I'm allergic, so I don't use regular potatoes um, or regular white potatoes, but I like the white sweet potatoes because they're kind of an in-between. They're a little bit sweet, but they're not super sweet, but both of them are delicious. Um, so that's gonna be our base. Carrot, celery, onion, sweet potatoes, garlic. And then of course it's chicken soup, but if you wanted to make this plant-based, very easy to make it plant-based. Instead of the chicken, use chickpeas or white beans. Both of those work really well. Um, so I just have some shredded chicken. If you saw my stories earlier today, I shared how I make my easy instant pot shredded chicken. It would be really, really easy to make the shredded chicken in the instant pot and then just strain it and put the soup together back in there after as well if you wanted to do that. So this is just 
one really large chicken breast, I would say like three quarters of a pound. I didn't actually measure it. Um, we get our chicken frozen, so I would have to actually like figure out how much it is. <laughs> but typically about three cups of shredded chicken. I'm making a smaller batch today um, since there's just a few of us eating today. Normally I cook for my whole big family, um, but my dad's actually away right now. You're gonna need some sort of chicken stock or chicken broth. Um, I love using homemade, but I don't always have homemade. So I'm just using Trader Joe's today. And again, if you want it plant-based, just use a veggie stock. I'm going to be using some pre-cooked wild rice. So this is actually a wild rice, brown rice blend. And I used the rest the end of the package. So I thought I would bring the package and share this with you guys. This is my favorite, the Lundberg wild rice blend. So wild rice itself is, has a really, um, really unique flavor to it. It's very earthy. And I think the wild rice blend has some brown rice in there as well as the wild rice. And so it has a, a little bit, it adds that texture and that flavor of the wild rice without it being super overwhelming. So all I do for the wild rice is I, Honestly, you guys, I follow the package directions. <laughs> and, um, so I cook it for about 45 minutes in some water with a little bit of butter or oil. I find that that really helps it to stay a little bit more fluffy and not sticky. Um, so I cook it ahead of time and it it really, following the package directions is beautiful. I have not had, um, I haven't had good success cooking wild rice or even a wild rice blend in the rice cooker. So I don't recommend it. Typically I recommend the rice cooker for pretty much every grain. It is a miracle worker. Like you just put the grain in there. As long as you've got the right ratios, it works great. Instant Pot works great for that as well. But with the wild rice blend, I find oftentimes like part of the rice is really soft and part of it is really hard. And so I'm not a fan. So I cooked it on the stove had this done ahead of time. These are really easy things that you could prep ahead. If you're doing some meal prep at the beginning of the week, you could shred some chicken, have that ready. You could cook the wild rice ahead of time, have that ready. You could have the veggies ahead, have that ready. Um, or you could just have one of those components. And even if you just have one of those components, it's gonna make your life so much easier when you put this together. But it's an easy recipe anyway, right? So carrot, celery, onion, garlic, potatoes, wild rice, chicken, Lemon, okay, you definitely want a lemon. This is going to brighten up the flavor and this is really gonna bring out the flavor of spring. So I'm going to use some lemon zest and lemon juice and I have my handy little mini colander for that. And a whole bunch of fresh dill. I love fresh dill. The smell of fresh dill just reminds me of the springtime. Now, I know that not everyone loves dill, so if you don't wanna use dill, you are welcome to use thyme. Thyme works really well in this dish as well, or fresh oregano. I do recommend a fresh herb for this because that's what's going to really bring the freshness to this dish. So we're gonna actually chop this up, and I'm just gonna chop it up right now and share with you guys because everything else is chopped and ready to go, and then we'll start cooking. Um, so I'm actually gonna save part of this. I'm going to, this is going to be about three tablespoons. I might need a little bit more. Yeah, this is about two tablespoons. Let me grab a little bit more. Thankfully I have it right next to me. Um, and I'm gonna put about two tablespoons in while it cooks to infuse some of that flavor in there. But then for that added freshness, I'm just gonna put about a tablespoon in right at the very end. So if you don't like the flavor of fresh dill and you would rather it be cooked, then you can put it all in when you're cooking it, but it's totally up to you. So with any sort of fresh herbs, I just use the gather and chop method, right? So I'm just gathering it all together, I'm holding it, and I'm just chopping in one direction, gathering it again, and chopping in the other direction. Um, with dill, it isn't necessary because dill doesn't tend to stick to itself too much, um, but something that does help for any other herbs that you're using is just using a little tiny pinch of salt. Um, this also works if you're mincing garlic, and that keeps it from sticking to your knife and sticking together and makes it a little bit easier to chop. So just a little chef tip there. Now I feel like I need to chop it again, but it just adds a little bit of coarseness to it. It makes that a little bit easier. So little tip there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start cooking. Now that you know all of the ingredients that we need, let's get going. So we are on saute over here on the Instant Pot, but again, doesn't matter what sort of pan you are using. We are just gonna heat it to medium high and I'm gonna add a good dose of olive oil. This is just regular olive oil. Um, extra virgin olive oil is for salads. Regular olive oil is for cooking or you could also use avocado oil as well or ghee if you want that buttery type flavor as well. Um, the only reason you could use butter, but I would use half butter, half oil, because that'll increase the smoke point of the butter. Otherwise the butter might burn because we are gonna be doing a little bit of sauteing. I forgot my spatula. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a spatula. 
right back here. Just using a wooden spatula for this. And I'm gonna start by adding my onions and my carrots and my celery. And we're just gonna saute them until they're starting to turn translucent. So because this is a soup, by the way, notice that the first thing I do when I put these in the pot, and not everyone does this, which is why I wanna remind you guys, is I stir, okay? So whether you are doing this on the stove top or you are doing this in the Instant Pot, you wanna make sure that you are coating those vegetables with oil because that is what is cooking the vegetables, okay? The oil heating up in the pot is what is going to cook those vegetables evenly. I'm also going to lightly season them because we want all of the components of our dish to be seasoned, okay? Um, the best way to get good flavor within your dish without dumping a bunch of salt in at the end is to season it as you go. So each of the components is seasoned and it doesn't feel flat at the end. Oftentimes what we'll do is we won't season it until the very end and then we're like, oh, it needs salt. And then we dump a bunch of salt in and then it just tastes salty. It doesn't taste seasoned. So the point of salt is to bring out the flavor of the different components of our dish. So as we, if, as, if we saute, wow, if we season as we go, as we saute, we can really infuse more of that flavor throughout the dish and not just at the very end kind of dumping that salt in. So we don't want our food to taste salty. We want it to be well seasoned. So we're just gonna let that go for a second here. And because it is the Instant Pot that we're using, or if you're using a Dutch oven um, or any sort of stock pot, I've got my Dutch oven down here. I was gonna use it and then I was like, you guys probably don't wanna hang out with me for like a half an hour while I just wait for the soup to cook. So we're using the Instant Pot to make it a little bit easier. So that's starting to turn translucent over there. Just see through. Okay, I'm gonna push this off to the side and I'm just going to mince my garlic over here as we are waiting. So for those of you who haven't seen this before, you've probably, if you've been a part of any of these Cook with Chris's, you guys know I love my microplane. It's my favorite kitchen tool. You need to go out and buy yourself one or ask for one for Mother's Day if you have not, if you don't have one. It makes life so much easier. I actually had a friend comment last week that she was a little bit nervous using the microplane because she's afraid she's gonna nick her fingers. It's very hard to nick your finger on the microplane. I have definitely microplaned my nail polish off before, <laughs> um, but I just, I just go up until the end and you'll get more comfortable with it um, the more you use it. And also, Secure it against something. Whoops, I'm losing my garlic over here because I'm moving around. Um, but if you secure it against something, you're much less likely to nick your finger on the microplane. You're way more likely to nick your finger chopping than you are with the microplane. So I've got two big cloves of garlic over here. And I'm just gonna stir this again. Just gonna check to see if we have any questions. You guys are always welcome to ask me any questions throughout um, about what I'm cooking and then about just cooking in general if you want as well. All right, I love the Instant Pot. It cooks so fast, but again, if you don't have one, just if you're doing this in the slow cooker, you just totally skip this part and just add in these main ingredients that I'm gonna put in before I shut the lid. I'm gonna add in the garlic. Yes, you could chop this if you don't have the microplane, but the microplane just makes it more even. And our goal is always that everything cooks evenly, right? All right, we're just mixing in that garlic, stirring it well. Um, the garlic only needs about 10 to 15 seconds. You do not want to brown your garlic. Brown garlic is bitter garlic, okay? So as much as we don't wanna avoid using heat, we do wanna make sure that we're watching our garlic and we're stirring it well because we want our food to to taste good, we don't want any extra bitterness in there. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna add in the sweet potatoes. They don't need any sauteing. And there's already some salt in the bottom there with the other vegetables, so I don't need to season it right now. And I know my stock has a little bit of salt in it. If you're using um, a stock, you don't need to use as much salt, but I'm just gonna stir that in well. Again, coating it in the oil. Always coating in the oil so that starts to cook. And those are just medium diced. And I'm also gonna add in the chicken as well. Now there's a little bit of broth in the bottom here. You could strain it if you're using it for anything else, but because I'm using it for a chicken soup, I'm just leaving it. I'm gonna go ahead and stir it. 
Now here's something that I I was um, thinking about the other day. A question that I get asked a lot, or I got asked a lot when I when I used to teach in-person cooking classes, um, was do you always use salt and pepper? So salt and pepper have been used <laughs> together almost as like as one term, like fruits and vegetables is like the same thing, salt and pepper. You salt and pepper your food. Um, you don't have to always use pepper and pepper isn't always appropriate. Absolutely use pepper if you are, if you're cooking steak and if you like pepper. Um, but for something like a, a spring soup like this, I find the, the flavor of pepper is just overpowering and it's unnecessary. You don't always have to add salt and pepper at the same time. Salt is going to season your food. Um, pepper is going to add a little bit of, what did I, what did I use last week? A little bit of zip, <laughs> which is not a real, it's not a real turn. Um, but it does add a, a little bit of something, but it's not always the something that you want. So it's okay to not always use pepper. If you love pepper and you want to use a little bit, absolutely. Um, I always prefer fresh cracked because it's really easy to over pepper your food. All right, so that is just all mixed in really well together. I'm gonna to take the same knife, doesn't matter because I just used it on dill. And I'm going to squeeze in the juice of about half of a lemon. You can always add more lemon juice at the end, um, but remember lemon juice does add some seasoning to it. So I use this small colander. It's one of my most used kitchen tools. I use this for my lemon water in the morning and anytime I use citrus because it just collects the seeds in there, super easy. And I find it makes way less of a mess and it's way less of a hassle than those citrus juicers. So that's what I use. I love it. It also works for straining things like small amounts of bone broth. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in there. And then I'm gonna add, make sure I'm not missing anything. We are also gonna go ahead and zest that lemon. I should have zested it ahead of time. That's okay, I only need half of it. Um, I'm gonna add in about two of the tablespoons of dill right now. And I'm just going to stir that in. We're gonna save the wild rice. We don't need the wild rice quite yet. We don't need the lemon, the lemon zest quite yet either. That's why I haven't zested it yet. So I'm gonna fill this up to the top. So about four to six cups, depending on how much chicken you used. Okay, four to six cups just to the very top because the vegetables are going to release some liquid as well. Um, and you can always add more broth later. I will probably add more broth to desired consistency once I add the wild rice at the end. So I'm just gonna pick it up and show you guys. This is what it looks like now. I'm not seasoning it right now because the broth has some salt in there. Like I said, I seasoned the vegetables and the chicken is already seasoned. Let's see if you guys can see that. It's very hard to see that. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Nope, okay. All right, that's the best I can do. <laughs> it's just up to the top. And then we are going to close it with anything in the Instant Pot. And this is the same on the stove. If you do this in the Instant Pot versus on the stove, it's the same thing. With anything in the Instant Pot, you just wanna make sure everything is covered in liquid um, or else it won't work properly. So we are setting it, if you are using the Instant Pot, to seal. Make sure you set it to seal, otherwise it won't work. We're going to turn it off from saute, turn it on manual, and I'm gonna put it on 10 minutes. That's it, 10 minutes. It'll take about five minutes to heat up and then it'll take about 10 minutes to cook and then we'll go ahead and we'll pull it off. So while that's going, it's gonna beep at me again because it's turning on. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna zest my lemon um, and let's chat a little bit about transitioning from season to season when it comes to our food. Um, I didn't prepare this or plan this ahead of time, but I was like, what am I gonna chat with them about while we're waiting for our food to cook? I need one small bowl for, no, it's right in front of me. It's Thursday, you guys. Thursday is Friday Eve, and that is a thing. I'm gonna rinse this real quick. All right, it is really just starting to feel like spring in New England this week, I feel like. This is like the first, it's been kind of on and off since then, um, but the girls and I have been really enjoying being outside this week as much as possible. We went to Target because we needed to get birthday presents for a friend and we picked up some new like outdoor games, which always feels like spring to me. We got like 
a tie-dye ball, which they've already started fighting over. Why, why do we not buy individual items for our kids every time? Or is that just me? Because for Easter, the kids are, have been into, I've got two girls, they're seven and three, for those of you who don't know, they've been really into ponies. Um, so they each got a pony because if we were to get one pony and they were the same ponies, so we can't argue over which pony is the better pony. They're the same. Um, but we've already fought over the ball. But you know what? It doesn't matter, really, honestly, because I feel like when I'm outside, <laughs> lemon zest. When I'm outside and in, in the spring sun and the birds are chirping and it's beautiful and it's warm and it's not cold, doesn't even matter. It's amazing. <laughs> So I'm just putting this little lemon zest. I'm using the zest of about half of a lemon. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put the dill in here as well. So why are we adding the lemon zest at the end? Because if you add the lemon zest in too early, it very easily turns the soup a little bit bitter. Um, and we really want the freshness from the lemon zest and the dill. So we're gonna put this in right at the end. And, um, and then we're gonna season it to taste. So we're gonna put it in with the wild rice. And we are gonna go ahead and season it to taste. And then we're gonna add a little bit of extra broth if we want to as well. Okay, so let's chat about transitioning season to season. So oftentimes we feel like we need to completely reinvent our menu season to season. And for some of us, we want to. Some of us were like, yeah, like I, I want to eat all new foods when it comes to the springtime because I'm just kind of like bored of the same old, same old that I've been cooking all winter long. And I totally get that. And I, you know, spring is like my favorite time to create new recipes because I'm just so excited about the fresh new flavors of spring. I know not all of us are recipe creators, but for me, I get very excited about that and I get excited to share new spring recipes. But it can also feel overwhelming, especially as busy moms or just busy people in general when we're like, I don't need, I don't wanna create a whole new recipe or a whole new recipe, a whole new, like docket of recipes for spring. And I know many of you know that when I talk a lot about meal planning and meal planning in a way that's flexible and meal planning in a way that really works for you and your family and doesn't overwhelm you because there's enough craziness in life as a mom, the last thing we need is to be more stressed about our meal plan. However, we also wanna be nourishing ourselves and our kids and we don't want to be, um, you know, getting takeout three times a week because we're too, overwhelmed to cook. So what's the happy medium? Happy medium is learning how to meal plan in a way that's flexible and works for us. And how do we not get bored of our meal plan? We'll be transitioning. So one of my, my biggest recommendations for meal planning is to have a family favorites list. So that's a list of recipes that your family loves, that you know your family loves, that for the most part, the majority of your family members, depending on the size of your family, enjoy, right? So for my family, my husband eats pretty much anything. Like it doesn't matter what you give him. He'll pretty much eat it. He doesn't love mushrooms or olives, but other than that, he'll still try it. Um, he eats pretty much anything. So he's not a big deal. If you put it in front of him, he's just thankful somebody's feeding him. My kids have very different opinions. My older daughter is much more adventurous and she likes to try new things, but there's a couple things that she doesn't really love. Like she really doesn't like dill. She's a super taster, which we learned this year when we were doing homeschool together, um, which makes a lot of sense because I'm also a super taster. It's something I learned in, in college in food science class, um, which is just kind of fun to learn. One of the reasons why I love food so much and why it's a little bit easier for me to pick out the different flavors and foods and recreate recipes is because I have this fun ability that 25% of the population does as well. So you might also be a super taster. Um, so she's much more adventurous though. She likes trying new things and she'll just say, I don't really like this or I love this, this is a do-over, which is what she says when she wants me to make something again. My three-year-old is kind of your typical, like. Not, I don't want to say your typical three-year-old because not all three-year-olds are like this, but um, it she is very much that like slightly, I don't like using the P word, but more selective toddler. And she you knows she would just eat chicken nuggets and mac and cheese every day if you gave it to her. Um, she'd be like totally happy with that pasta with butter, you know, those like kid type foods. And that's just, that's just, just is who she is. However, she likes more spice than her sister. She loves tacos. She wants me to give it to her spicier. She likes chili. Like it's crazy the foods that she enjoys versus the things her sister doesn't love as much spice. She doesn't love dill. I'm not sure if Ren loves dill either. Um, 
but they're just different in that way. But there are a significant amount of recipes in my repertoire that we all love. There are very few things that I don't love. I don't love okra and lima beans. And I don't eat white potatoes for the most part because they make me sick, but that's like literally it. So, but you know, I'm the cook, so I get to choose what we make. Um, so <laughs> the Instant Pot is yelling at me over here. So basically what I do is I compile a list of the meals that I make on the regular that my family enjoys. And I have a master list and then I take that list and I divide it seasonally. So I just adjust it to the season, the meals that we really love that are a little bit more geared towards the season of fall or winter or spring or summer. And, and fall and winter tend to be more grouped together and spring and summer tend to be grouped together as well. There is not a ton of crossover, though in the summertime we tend to do a lot more grilling and things like that um, than we do in the spring because it's still a little bit cool in New England. But a lot of these meals are just transition meals. We just shift some of the ingredients. It's not like a whole new list of meals. But the point of the family favorites list is that that's where I start when I do my meal planning. I have my list and I'm like, okay, what do I wanna make this week? What do I already have on hand in my pantry, in my fridge, in my freezer that I wanna use in the next week? And what are maybe some recipes I wanna try? That's a separate list that I keep on hand that I go Seasonally, I usually take a trip into my cookbook collection and onto Pinterest and then any inspiration I have for new recipes that I wanna create. I write a whole list down of those. And typically I take from the family favorites list a couple of those, a couple recipes to try. And then we always have two nights each week that are flex nights. So typically it's like takeout one night and then maybe leftovers the other night. It just kind of depends. We used to do a pizza night every week and we got burnt out on that, especially during like the quarantine time last year. So we're like over pizza for a while. Um, it'll come back, but you know, we all get into those phases. So having the family favorites list, but then also having it to so that we can modify it for the season makes meal planning so much easier, but it also customizes it a little bit to the season so it doesn't feel like we're using the exact same list all year long. We are, we're using the same master list, but we kind of, we take that and we divide it seasonally. Um, so let's talk about spring. Okay, so how do we, how do we transition from fall just from fall, from winter, well, I guess fall to winter to spring, <laughs> from winter to spring. So what do you think of when you think of spring? So I think of fresher, lighter flavors. And it doesn't necessarily mean like lighter meals, but lighter flavors. So for me, it's things like dill and all different fresh herbs and lemon juice and yogurt and tahini sauces on bowls instead of things like, you know, lots of rich soups and stews. Now I've got the soup today, but we're lightening it up a little bit when I, when I say lighten, I'm talking about the flavor profile, right? The flavor profile is a little bit lighter and brighter with the dill and with the lemon, a lot more fresher dishes, like more um, kind of vegetable and herb heavy pasta type dishes instead of like your kind of like heavier lasagna or um, like meat sauce type dishes. We love like a spaghetti squash bolognese when it comes to the winter time. In the springtime, we love making my cashew cream sauce with roasted broccoli over spaghetti squash. And then by the summertime, spaghetti squash isn't very good anymore. So we just move on to whatever's next. I make up my pasta primavera instead of um, like a pasta with a red sauce type thing in the springtime as well. And I think I have that video up somewhere. Maybe, maybe I'll make that. Maybe we'll make the pasta primavera. I think I'm, I'm gonna do carbonara in a couple weeks as well, which is one of my favorites. Um, I love bringing in more um, brighter toppings for bowls. So things like feta cheese adds a little bit of brininess and just makes it feel a little bit brighter. I love my um, a Greek chicken meatballs with orzo. Um, I stir in some spinach for some greens, top it with feta. It's simple, it's family friendly, my kids love it. That's what we're making next week in Cook With Chris and it is a one pot dish. As it starts to get spring and summertime, I'm way more inclined to do one pot dishes, to avoid the slow cooker and the instant pot for the most part, to do a lot more sheet pan dishes or like salads or um, kind of like bars. So we'll do like a taco bar or a salad bar or a burger bar and those are the type of things that we like to do a little bit more in the springtime. And I 
also consider like, so what does, what reminds me of spring? What are kind of spring type flavors for me? What do I enjoy in the springtime? And I just shared a lot of those with you guys. And then what is in season in the springtime? So what's in season where you are in the springtime? Spring in Florida is gonna be way different than spring here in New England. But for us here in New England, some things that start to come out in the springtime are things like spring peas and asparagus and leafy greens and radishes. And if your family likes any of those, you can start incorporating those in and replacing some of the things, some of like the heavier type vegetables that you might have used in the winter time with those and just slowly transitioning those vegetables. You don't have to change the whole meal or change your whole menu. It's just transitioning. It's just switching things up a little bit. Like with this recipe, we just switched up a little bit with the dill and with the lemon. So that's one of the things that I love to do to kind of transition our menu within the different seasons. Um, I love using just, there's, are, there are certain things that I just feel like scream spring to me, like wild rice feels like spring, orzo feels like spring. Um, and not that we don't use these in the fall and the winter time, but it just feels, it just feels more like spring to me. So we've got a few more minutes on this over here. If you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and ask any questions. And um, I'm going to pull this off in just a couple minutes and we will finish it off and put it together. And then we'll be done. This meal does come together um, in total in about, in about 30 minutes, especially if you're not chatting throughout, you can go and you can do the dishes while this is cooking. You can um, go and play with your kids. You can take a couple minutes to sit on the couch and rest. That's the beauty of dishes like this, especially when you do a little bit of meal prep ahead of time. It just makes this come together so much easier. And speaking of meal prep, I do have a meal prep class that is going to be coming out in the next couple of months. So stay tuned for that. Um, I know I've promised it for a while, doing a live meal prep class. And you guys know I have my meal prep course with the live class. It's coming, it's in the works. So I will stay tuned for that. I will let you guys know about that in the near future. If you like these Cook With Chris classes, um, this will be a longer class that you're gonna have to sign up for, um, but I'm excited about it. So. That is coming up soon to teach you guys the three different styles of meal prep and how you can make meal prep work for you without feeling like you need to cook all of your food in tiny Tupperware containers and eat the same thing over and over again because guys, I'm a chef and a foodie. I am not here for that. I am here for making life simpler and making the meals that are delicious and nourishing for us and our family simpler and easier without the stress. No boring around here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clear off my countertop. This is almost ready, so I'm gonna be able to go ahead and hit the valve and I can show you the soup. So I've already shared with you guys what we are cooking this month here on Cook with Chris. Um, next week, we're gonna do my Greek chicken meatballs with orzo. We're gonna do pasta carbonara. We are going to do chicken piccata. All of these are kind of like some of my spring favorites, but I'm gonna have you guys vote for May, what you guys wanna see in May. In June, our schedule will probably change um, just because my husband's sailing schedule is absolutely insane starting the last weekend of May. So I'll stay tuned for that. I'll let you guys know, I'll update you guys on that. But for now, we're gonna keep going on Thursday afternoons. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna have you guys vote in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you are checking out my stories share lots of recipes and meal ideas with you guys over there. And I will share with you um, what I will be, so are some of my ideas for May and I'll let you guys choose the menu for May, which is gonna be tons of fun. And if you guys have any suggestions or anything in particular that you want to learn how to cook, as always, my DMs are always open. Shoot me a message and I'll get back to you as quick as I can and I'll let you know if I can share that in a cook with Chris, or we have some fun stuff coming up in the future to uh, whoops, teach you guys, teach you guys a little bit more about cooking. All right, valve is going. <laughs> All we're gonna do next after this is done is we are going to go ahead and stir in the wild rice. We're gonna, and 
the dill and the lemon. We're gonna season it to taste. We're gonna add more stock if we need to. Because the chicken's already cooked, the only thing that's cooking in the Instant Pot or on the stove is the vegetables. So it really only needs about 10 minutes in the Instant Pot. And I forgot to mention, um, if you are going to cook this on the stove top, I do recommend 30 to 40 minutes just to let all those flavors really meld together. But if you've only got 20, that's okay. As long as the vegetables are soft, then you should be good to go. It'll sit in the fridge overnight and it'll just get even more flavorful. Almost there. <laughs> the only problem with the Instant Pot is you do need to wait a second for it to release. Almost there. I'm impatient, can you tell? <laughs> when you're working in a professional kitchen or teaching a cooking class, there's rarely any waiting because, and I mean, I, you guys know as busy moms too, you don't, you're not like waiting around for your food to cook in the kitchen. You're running around doing other things. So when I'm here, I'm like, we're just waiting. We're waiting for it to happen. It's gonna happen. We know it's gonna happen. <laughs> Oh, it's so good to see all of you guys today. It is so fun when you guys hop on with me. I know that two o'clock Eastern, um, which is what, like 11 a.m.? Yeah, 11 a.m. Pacific time is kind of a weird time during the day. It's what time works for me. So I love when I see you guys hop on. And if you hop on later, please always leave me a comment. If you, if you go ahead and watch the replay later, I love hearing who is on with me because I can only see who's on live with me. I can't see who's on later unless you give it a like, which I always appreciate. All right, you're looking good over here. Nice and soft. Um, by the way, I do not have any feeling in my fingers, so please don't reach into a hot dish. I always have to use that disclaimer. Like, it is very, very hot over here. <laughs> um, I worked in the culinary world for a lot of years, and touching hot things is not a weird thing to me, but it, it's not a smart idea, so don't do it. <laughs> and don't teach your kids to do it. I know my kids are like, mommy, that's hot. And I'm like, it is? Didn't know. <laughs> All right, we're just adding in the dill and the lemon. And I'm just making sure the potato is fully cooked, which is perfect. If you don't overcook it, if it cooks in the slow cooker, the potatoes are definitely going to break down a lot more. Um, oh my gosh, it smells so good. But if you cook it um, in the Instant Pot, I love only cooking it for about 10 minutes because the potatoes still kind of hold their shape. Adding in the wild rice, it's about a cup and a half of cooked wild rice. And it's gonna thicken the soup up really nicely to almost a stew consistency, which is why I'm gonna add a little bit of broth. I'm going to taste it. And you're always welcome to add more lemon juice, more dill, and salt to taste from here. Honestly, I think that looks good. I like my soups a little bit thicker and a little bit more stew-like. Anyway. Whoops. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and give it a taste. Also, one of the reasons that I like to choose a stock that has less sodium in it, I mean, this obviously does have sodium in it, but it's like 380 milligrams versus like 2000 in some of them is because I do like to actually season my food to taste instead of feeling like it's just salty because of the broth. Also why I like to make my own. Mmm, <laughs> so good. Just a little bit of that dill flavor in there. Little tiny hint of that lemon. We can always add a little bit more. One more taste. By the way, when we taste food, we wanna make sure we let it cool down because we taste things differently when they're hot versus when they're cold. And it's harder to taste salt when something's hot. So you wanna give it a second to cool down so you can taste the seasoning. So good, you guys. <clears throat> Just needs a little bit more salt. 
not a ton. Because remember, the salt is about bringing out the flavor. One last taste, I know. You guys are just hanging out watching me eat soup now. I hope you're not hungry while you're waiting for this. Mmm. <laughs> Perfect. Also, apparently I'm not supposed to use that symbol, so that was supposed to be a perfect symbol. I don't know the rules. Okay. This looks so good. It's gonna be such a good fresh spring dinner, especially as it starts to cool down at night a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's give it a little look. Look at how good that looks. It's kind of hard to see with the camera like this, but I cannot wait to enjoy this for dinner tonight. Thank you guys so much for joining me for today's Cook with Chris. Next week, we're gonna be back making my Greek chicken meatballs with orzo. It's a one pot dish. It is a family favorite, and I think you guys are going to love it too. Um, so join me again next week at two o'clock Eastern. As always, this recipe is going to be um, in my stories after this. So head to my stories, go ahead and screenshot it, and stay tuned for what I'm gonna be making over the next couple of weeks and then in May you guys get to vote um, and stay tuned for that meal prep class as well that's coming out soon too. All right friends have a beautiful Thursday and a great weekend and I will catch you guys next week.